So let's have a look at how we hand over control from one RBC area to another. Why would we have more than one RBC? Well, there are times when one RBC cannot cope with the number of trains, the number of routes, number of simultaneous activities. Many early projects only needed one RBC. They were quite small, tended to be quite simple layouts. However, as ETC has been rolled out, more and more places we need to change control from one RBC to another. So what about when we need to do this? How do we do it? How do we make sure that the system remains safe and efficient? It's all about having control. And only one RBC can be giving instructions to the ETCS onboard. If the ETCS onboard receives messages from another RBC, then it'll either store them if it knows that it's going to be transferring to that RBC area in the future, or reject them as not being relevant to it. So let's have a look at how controls passed from one RBC to another. And it's actually quite simple. We have our train proceeding along the track towards an RBC handover border. The RBC on the left is the handing over RBC, often known as the HOV or HOV. The RBC on the right is the accepting RBC, ACC. So our train is proceeding towards the border. It's under the control of the handing over RBC. And the handing over RBC will have given it a movement authority to approach the border. However, the handing over RBC cannot issue a movement authority beyond the border because that would be into the accepting RBC's area of control. So with the train on its way towards the border, the handing over RBC will send a pre-announcement to the accepting RBC. Now this pre-announcement says, I've got a train for you. And it will normally include information about the train, such as the validated train data. It includes its NID engine, the unique identifier of the EVC on the train. On receipt of the pre-announcement, the e-accepting RBC will send back an acknowledgement. That acknowledgement then allows the handing over RBC, if it is ready to issue a movement authority up to and potentially over the border, to send a request for route relay route related information, RRI. This request informs the accepting RBC how much information the handing over RBC is expecting in terms of distance, number of sections, or, or similar. The accepting RBC will now treat this as if it was an MA request from a train, and it will try and establish a route in the accepting area and calculate the information to go into a movement authority. That would include the speed profiles, gradient profiles, uh, the movement authority, the mode profile, linking information, etc. Once it's compiled that information, it sends it back as route related information to the handing over RBC. And that acknowledges it. And at this point, effectively, it is like in interlocking terms, the route has been set across the border and it has been confirmed that the approach locking or the route locking is effective. Having received back the RRI from the accepting RBC and acknowledged it, the handing over RBC can now send a new movement authority to the train and that movement authority can go all the way across the border. And it's also quite typical at this point to announce the RBC handover border to the train. So now our train can proceed. And if it has got more than one data radio, it will actually start using the information in that RBC announcement to establish a second radio connection with the accepting RBC. If it only has one radio, it will continue to talk to and receive instructions from the handing over RBC. If it does establish a session with the, with the accepting RBC, any information it receives will be stored if it is going to be relevant once it has changed over controlled RBCs 
or rejected. So let's have a look at our train now proceeding towards the border. When the train considers that it is past the border, then it will send a position report and it will always send that to the handing over RBC. That will enable the handing over RBC to announce to the accepting RBC that the train is now into their area of control and the accepting RBC can expect a position report from the train. With more than one EV seat radio, EDOR, on board the train, then it will also be able to send a position report to the accepting RBC. That position report received by the accepting RBC will generate a message back from the accepting RBC to the handing over RBC to say that the accepting RBC is now taking over responsibility. Once the train proceeds a little further, it will then disconnect from the handing over RBC. So what about if we only do have one radio? Well, the principles remain that the instructions for the, from the handing over RBC are applicable until the front of the train crosses the border. At the point that the train believes it has completely crossed the border, it disconnects from the handing over RBC and attempts to establish a connection to the accepting RBC. And once connected to that, it will report its position and start taking instructions from the accepting RBC. Obviously, there will be a short delay, a delay while that process of disconnecting and reconnecting, sending information. And what's the issue with having a delay? Well, of course, if an emergency happens in that short period, the train has not got connection with either the accepting or the handing over RBC.